So when we talk about the hippocampus, we're really talking about the hippocampal formation. And the hippocampal formation has three subdivisions. There is the hippocampus proper, the dentate gyrus, and the dentate gyrus is pictured here. It's this toothy part, and hence the name dentate. So it's the toothed part. And then the subiculum, um, which can't really be seen in this cartoon, but these three parts, the hippocampus, the dentate gyrus, and the subiculum, all together form the hippocampal formation. The hippocampus itself has been called cornu amonis, or amen's horn. And so if you're ever reading papers about the uh, hippocampus, you may see it referred to as CA, meaning cornu amonis or amen's horn. And there are subdivisions even within the, the hippocampus. There's CA1, 2, and 3, um, which are subdivisions of the hippocampus that have different um, synaptic connections. The afferent connections of the hippocampus, so it's receiving information from the amygdala, so that's going in. All parts of the sensory cortex are coming in. Um, the cingulate gyrus, that's on the medial surface of the brain, is sending information into the hippocampus, as is the frontal cortex. So almost every place is going to send information to the hippocampus. Information flowing out of the hippocampus, or efferent information, is going to go back to the amygdala, back to the sensory cortex, back to the frontal cortex. Um, it's also going to go to the uh, hypothalamus, which is pictured here. Um, this is the mammillary nucleus of the hypothalamus, and it also sends information back to the anterior nucleus of the thalamus itself. And remember that the thalamus and the hypothalamus are part of the diencephalon. I want to draw your attention to a very important outflow from the hippocampus, which is the fornix. And that's this big fiber tract pictured here. And this fiber tract, the fornix, connects the hippocampus, or the hippocampal formation as a whole, to the mammillary nucleus of the um, hypothalamus. The mammillary nucleus is important, um, and I'm not exactly sure how it contributes to memory, but this reciprocal connection, the connection to and from the mammillary nucleus and the hippocampal formation is um, important, and we know this because of a thing called Korsakoff syndrome. Korsakoff. This is a specific type of anterograde amnesia that results from a B6 deficiency. So if you're not getting enough vitamin B6, and they first noticed this in um, severe people with severe alcoholism because their, um, their uh, digestive system is not absorbing B6 or they're really malnourished, that this specifically has a deleterious effect on the mammillary nucleus and that that mammillary nucleus, um, the problems with the mammillary nucleus, um, in turn results in an anterograde amnesia. And when they did further studies, they found that the mammillary nucleus was connected to the hippocampal formation. So if you, um, I think if you, um, you can recover from Korsakoff's amnesia um, if you start to eat right. The circuitry of the, um, of the hippocampal formation is kind of complicated but not so terrible. Um, I'm not going to ask you to memorize this, but I do want to kind of give you an overview of how we think it works. This is called the perforant pathway, okay? And when we talked about the afferent connections into the hippocampus, we talked about all of the stuff coming from all of these multimodal sensory areas. They're all going to feed into an area called the entorhinal cortex. So if we have a hippocampus, um, just outside is our temporal lobe. So if our temporal cortex is kind of out here, all of this information is coming into the entorhinal cortex, which is part of our temporal lobe. 
From there, it goes into the dentate gyrus. From the dentate gyrus, it goes into the hippocampus proper, the CA3 and CA1, just that general hippocampus area. Then it goes from the hippocampus to the subiculum. Again, these are all three-layered uh, three cortex. And then from these two areas, the information goes back out to the multimodal, multisensory association cortex. So it's a loop. The more you study neuroscience, and the more, especially when you start to talk about behavior and behavioral systems, motor, sensory, limbic, all of these things, you're going to find that they're all loops, great big circular um, or oblong loops that are taking information from one area, um, processing it, and sending it back out to where it came from. I simply want to um, introduce this because as you go through your studies of neuroscience, you will probably run into the perforant pathway, and now at least it will ring a bell when you have a more detailed lecture on it. So now that you have seen the perforant pathway, the next time you run across it when you're taking a, neuro, a more advanced neuroscience course, you'll be familiar with the terminology and par, the, the different parts of the perforant pathway.